they would ask me questions because they knew about my Christian background. Does God hate me? Am I going to hell? Would you read my favorite Bible verse at my funeral? Would you do my eulogy? Would you tell my son and daughter what happened to daddy? And I did all those things. I watched a hundred of my friends and acquaintances die of AIDS before I stopped counting. I have occasion to encounter the sentiment that if you experience same-sex attraction, then it is either impossible or undesirable not to live a gay lifestyle. But we have three gentlemen here today who are going to offer a different perspective on that question. I had a strong sexual inclination at, at a very young age, and, and I directed it in the wrong direction. I got affection, I got approval, and I got affirmation. Somebody was touching me without hitting me. Somebody was talking to me without screaming at me and calling me names. I knew deep down it was wrong, but because of the need I had, again, for the attachment and for male approval, I just kept going back for more and more of that. We want to belong, we want to be attached. I mean, that's the big issue. And we get confused within our soul. But I said, I'm gay and I don't, I, I, I hate this. I don't like myself anymore. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, and he says, no, no, no. He says, you're just the seventh or eighth person tonight who's called for the same reason. A year or two in college that I, um, that I found out about the whole scene. I didn't know there were so many people like me. You have to know who you are. You have to be comfortable in your own skin. And if you're not comfortable in your own skin, then you look to someone else to feel that comfort. We're very good at the don't. We're really bad at the why. The reason why God says don't is because of that bonding issue. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. All of it just shows that God's intent was for us to bond with one other person, and that person was to be our mate, our spouse, for life. But it's wonderful to be able to understand that and recognize we don't have to become sexual to do that. I should have been one of those who were dying and married. So how did that happen? Because I certainly did what you do to get it. It becomes addictive. Sex can be very addictive. How do you explain healthy, happy, and successful LGBT couples and individuals? Even among what we call committed relationships, usually they're not really committed. Among the men, there's no such thing as monogamy. You can have a committed relationship, but it does not exist. Among the women, it does exist to a certain extent. They were committed, but they were not monogamous in their relationships. As desperate as many scientists are, as much time and money has been spent on it in the last several decades, there is not a shred of biologic genetic evidence that there is a gay gene or that anyone is born homosexual. Not a shred. I don't believe it's right that each person has to make their own decision. What besides AIDS is harmful in the gay lifestyle? Uh, you have the human papilloma virus. Right now, uh, many men, just for oral sex, are getting oral cancers, esophageal cancers, because of the human papilloma virus. There are over 400 and some sexually transmitted diseases. All of them occur within the homosexual lifestyle. Just go down to 400 and some, there's a whole list of them. Every STD you can find. Do you think reparative therapy can help some people and should be allowed? It's actually changing our internal view of ourself and our life. And I guess that's what I call repairing. So they're realizing today, I don't have to have sex to have a good relationship. Should it be allowed? Absolutely. All therapy seeks to repair something. If they have unwanted feelings, unwanted same-sex attraction, then they have a right to get the therapy they need to seek out the reason why. By the way, reparative therapy is nothing more than talk therapy. It's not the lies that have been put out by the homo-fascist agenda that say it's, it's electroshock therapy, uh, vomit revulsion therapy, and horror of horrors forced to flirt with a member of the opposite sex. I'll give you that one. That could be intimidating. But the, the, the point is, is that this is nothing but a piece of hate drummed up by people who want to stop anyone who has anything to say about the homosexual agenda that doesn't support it or promote it. It's a dangerous way to live. And there were so many times when I was out in the middle of it. I took so many chances. I'm, you know, it's amazing I'm still here. What is natural? Uh, 
to have a deep love and affection for someone of the same sex does not mean I have to sexualize it. If one is has same sex attraction, why don't you just make a point of try to follow his will and stop being so self-centered and self uh, self-absorbed? I just don't think it's a healthy way to live. And I I lived that way for so many years, so I have first-hand experience. There's also this desperate thing about finger length, which I find really comical. I went to bed with men that had long fingers and short fingers and fat fingers and skinny fingers, one didn't have a finger. It made absolutely no difference.